Over the last four years, I've worked as a software engineer for multiple big tech companies. I started at Amazon and eventually moved over to Google. I get asked a lot about what the culture was like working at these two big tech companies. I'll be talking a little bit about my total compensation at both, the interview experiences, as well as what the engineering culture looked like. Let's start at Amazon where I started my software engineering career way back in 2020. When I was working there, I made about $150,000 in total compensation. When I was working there, I got about $150 in Amazon credit, as well as free bananas. A lot of free bananas. And I think part of that was because the Amazon logo kind of looks like a banana if you look close enough. To even get in, my interview experience started off with a multiple choice test. And I think that's really just to figure out if someone actually knows enough computer science topics to work there. After that, they gave me two leak code questions, and it took me about 30 minutes each to solve both of them. After that, I thought I was either ghosted or rejected because it took them about two months before they came back with an email asking me to do an onsite. And what was really strange about this onsite was that it was a 20 minute interview, and I thought that was going to be way too short for an onsite interview. When I joined the call, I remember the interviewer asking me if I remember what the multiple choice questions were like two months ago. And I don't think most people are going to memorize what those answers to their questions were. But I was lucky enough to convince the interviewer that I was the one who solved those problems and that I did know enough computer science to work at Amazon. They gave me an offer the next week. And then two months later, I started my first day working as a software engineer. I had a lot of imposter syndrome starting off because I thought that the interview experience was a little bit too easy for me. But maybe it would get a little bit easier once I started working for a little bit. But over time, it actually started to get a little bit worse because I started to do a lot of research on blind and a lot of other places talking about PIP, performance improvement plans, getting fired, having issues that I felt like I wouldn't be successful working there. It wasn't until I left Amazon where I learned that almost everyone else working there had these PIP concerns in the back of their head too. Like everyone knows about it, but they're not going to talk about it. To talk about the engineering culture at Amazon, I just remember a ton of Amazon leadership principles that were really weird that felt like a cult or felt like a list of rules that everyone had to follow to be a good employee. If you look through some of them, you'll notice that a lot of them cater to either being business focused or customer obsession. And what you might struggle finding are things listed about teamwork or engineering productivity or engineering obsession. While I was there, I think nobody really liked them, but they talked about them all the time. And it's a little bit frowned on to complain about any of the principles that they have. But after going through that for a year, I realized I wasn't really growing enough as an engineer. I only made 52 code changes, which is about one a week that I was really worried about my long-term software engineering career. So I thought about switching companies and eventually I landed at Google. When I joined Google, they gave me a total compensation of $300,000. My favorite benefit there is the benefit that everyone talks about, which is the free food for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It was just really nice to go to work without trying to think about what you're going to eat that day or paying for your own food. They also had free massages. Most people don't do their massages, but I took one and it was one of the most relaxing things I've ever done in my life. So before I joined, my interview experience was for a mid-level role. They gave me four coding interviews as well as one behavioral interview. The coding interviews were a little bit on the harder side, talking more advanced data structure topics like dynamic programming and graphs. For the behavioral question, I got asked how I would make an AI app that would identify happy photos in your Google Photos. And I thought about it for a bit and I told the interviewer, that I would first figure out if someone actually wanted this. The interviewer was really happy with that answer and then gave me an offer a week later. When I joined Google, one of the most surprising things that blew me away was that all of the code was in a single monorepo. You can think of it as putting all of Google's code inside of one GitHub repository. That thing was huge. I could see everyone's code from Google search, YouTube products, and Pixel. It was pretty awesome. This definitely gave me a sign that the engineering culture was a lot stronger. I mean, I would even go to the bathroom and see a coding tip doing my business, whatever I had to do in the bathroom. I still remember when they were posting a little bit about BART and something similar to GitHub Copilot being released. It was pretty funny. The other strange thing about Google culture was that for every code review, you would need a programming language expert or readability reviewer to sign off on your code. So if you wrote code in Python, you would need your teammates approval as well as a Python expert to sign off on your code before it could get pushed. It definitely slowed a lot of people down, but it definitely made the code base a lot better. Between Amazon and Google, I definitely grew a lot more as a software engineer at Google because a lot of the internal tools that they had really helped engineers grow and become a lot more productive. I mean, if you look at Google's website, you can see so many listings about engineering productivity that you can tell that they take that really, really seriously. I hope me sharing my experiences job hopping 
makes you think a lot about the pros and cons about whether you want to stay at your role or move on to another one. There were a lot of positives for me. When I moved around, I was getting a promotion, I was getting a higher salary, and I was growing a lot as an engineer. But there are definitely a lot of drawbacks to doing that. For me, I had to onboard again for six months. And onboarding multiple times means I'm really setting back my career versus someone who's actually stayed put and just kept learning a lot more where they were at. I know a lot of people that don't change their jobs because they're thinking a lot about promotion. I know people who are job hopping because they choose more about remote work or finding a new start for themselves. At the end of the day, people are making decisions for what's best for them. And that is always something to be proud of. My name is Alex. And if this video was helpful for you, definitely subscribe. It helps the channel grow a lot. And I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.